since you hit play on Wife Teacher Mommy, the podcast today. I want to make sure that you know that our free self-love challenge is happening in February 2024 right here on the podcast. The goal of this challenge is to make creating an intentional practice of self-love even easier than ever simply by plugging in your earbuds and listening for about 10 minutes per day. But for the full experience, you're going to want to get the scorecard so you can enter the giveaways, get the daily journal prompt sent to your inbox and join us for the live wrap up podcast recording. Yes, you get to join me in the studio and record the podcast together live. It is all free. Go to wifeteachermommy.com slash self love challenge to sign up. Again, it is completely free. You'll get a daily reminder with the free 10 minute coaching each day and your journal prompt, and you will see a transformation over these 14 days. It is not only going to impact your relationship with yourself, but as I'll teach during the challenge, it is going to impact every single other relationship you have in your life, your relationship with other people, your relationship with teaching, that energy is going to impact every single other aspect of your life. So sign up at wifeteachermommy.com slash self love challenge. It's free. Now let's get to the episode. You are listening to episode number 46 of Wife, Teacher, Mommy, the podcast. Three simple ways to differentiate reading instruction. Do you teach varying levels of children? I bet you do. And today we'll be talking about how to make it easier for you to meet each of them during your reading instruction. you're here listening to Wife, Teacher, Mommy, the podcast today. I'm your host, Kelsey Sorensen, a former elementary teacher turned homeschool mom. Whether you are a teacher or a homeschool parent, my goal at Wife, Teacher, Mommy is to provide you with both teaching ideas and mindset tools to help you live your absolute best teacher life. Be sure to hit subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss an episode. Now let's go. Welcome back to the podcast. Well, if you're here for the first time, welcome. And if you're back, we're glad to have you. I've already been having some fun in our last few episodes about the holidays. We talked about holidays around the world. I did an episode about doing a secret Santa in your classroom or homeschool. So I hope you enjoyed those or be sure to check them out if you haven't yet. Now, today we are going to be talking about three simple ways that you can differentiate your reading instruction to make it easier on you for one, but also to make it more accessible for you to actually reach those different levels. I know it can be very challenging and often the curriculum you're given doesn't have that differentiation built into it. So we're going to talk about a few ways that you can do that that are simple that aren't going to be too challenging for you to implement into your classroom. So we have three different ways and I'm I'm going to tell you just right now what those three are and then we're going to dive into each one. So number one is books by level and implementing literature circles into your classroom. Number two is a website that one of our Wife Teacher Mommy team members used when she was in the classroom. It's called Newzella. It's a really cool website, and I can't wait to tell you more about it. And number three is our differentiated reading passages that are just loved by teachers. I'm going to share experiences from our users and tell you how you can get some for free. So keep listening. Okay, so let's dive into the first one, which is books by reading level and using literature circles. So we all want our kids reading books. Like books are just like, I don't know, for me, even as an adult, I just love curling up with a book and reading it. And so for differentiation, you can have kids pick leveled books when appropriate to read. And then you can also implement that yourself with literature circles, book clubs, whatever you call it, to have kids read a book on their level with other students who are at a similar level 
level. And this is a great way to naturally divide up students. And you don't have to say it's because, oh, we're dividing you into reading levels. It's just, hey, we're dividing into literature circles or book clubs. We need a smaller group. And each group is going to have its own book. And then kids aren't feeling called out for their reading level. It's just you're having smaller groups so you can have these more intimate discussions And those books just happen to be at their reading levels. When you do this, it's really fun to have students take different jobs as they study different comprehension strategies while they're reading the book at their level. So for example, in our literature circles um, resource, we have these adorable job names and you can totally swipe these and use them in your own literature circles too. So some of them that we have in our lower grade unit are super summarizer, illustrator, Um, Connection Constructor, Character Analyzer, Retail Reporter, Word Wizard, Quirky Questioner. I I just love that one. (laughs) So fun. Setting Seeker, uh, Detail Detective, Story Element Server, and Fact Farmer. Now, if you can't tell, these all kind of tie into jobs and so they have really cute clip art that goes with them. And then we have a lot of the same ones for the upper grades, but we changed out a few of them. We also used clip art that looks less, you know, childlike for the older grade levels. And some of the new ones that we added for the upper grade one are cause and effect carpenter, detail diver, point of view pilot, plot painter, compare and contrast coach, and prediction principal. And you should just see the images my team member Kinsey took and put together with each one. She came up with these names. She's so creative. I love how this resource turned out. Now, those are just some examples. You can pull those names, use them yourself, however you'd like. Now, keep in mind when you are picking level books for your literature circles, we want to keep in mind not only the level of the reading, but also the content. So if you have students who are below grade level, but you're teaching like older students, say they're like third grade. Okay, so for example, with that books about farm animals that are obviously geared towards younger children, or if the pictures and format are definitely geared towards younger children, they may not appeal to older kids who are like, they're just reading in a lower level. And the same can be said for those reading far above grade level. Like even if say they're in like sixth grade and they're reading at a post high school level, they may not be ready for the language and maturity in some adult level books. So we just need to keep both the leveling of the content in mind as well as the actual comprehension level. So that's just something to keep in mind as you're picking your books. And I'm sure I'm sure you probably know that, but it's just always a good thing to keep in mind. Now that was a super quick nutshell about literature circles. We'll probably do a longer episode to dive into each one at some point. DM me on Instagram if you'd like to hear more. But basically what you'll do is you'll just pick a book for each level. It's a natural way to divide up those students where it can just feel like, hey, I'm dividing you into groups to so you can each have these jobs and have these conversations together. And then it just so happens that those books are at their level. And we will dive into that even deeper in a future episode. So that was number one. So number one, this is a great thing to do to in the smaller groups have students read at their level. But this is definitely not a trick for full class instruction. And so the next two are actually ways that you can have full class instruction where everybody is all together, but students can still read at their own level. And this can also be great if you are a parent and you have children. So for me, like where I have my kids, I have a first grader and a third grader right now. And I love that with these next two ways, I can have them each read a similar thing and we can kind of do it together, but they're both reading at their own levels. So number two is full class instruction with Newzella. So this is that website I mentioned at the beginning of the episode. My team member Megan told me about this website and her school had gifted them a subscription and they have differentiated passages of current news stories. Now, Megan was a social studies teacher in secondary, so she used it for differentiated current news stories and they could pick their reading level and Newzella gives them that passage at their level. And then after the students finish reading, they take a quiz about the news story and every student can read that news story at their level so you can have great class discussions about what they read. And then you as the teacher can assign specific news stories and see their progress in their reading skills. But it's great because the students, they're reading the same thing. It's just at their level. And I love this. And as I mentioned, when Megan told me about it, she was talking about the 
the news stories, but I looked into it and I was like, you know, a lot of our listeners are in elementary and they do have elementary and they actually have other topics too. Like they have language arts, they have social emotional learning, they have science. Um, so it looks like a really cool website and I actually have not used it myself yet. And I'm not sure the pricing or anything. This is not sponsored or an ad, just something one of our team members has used with success. And I thought it was a great fun idea to share here on the podcast. So if you try it out, definitely let me know how it goes. I would love to hear about it. Okay. Now, number three is another great way to utilize full class instruction. And this is the way I use, which is by using our reading comprehension passages. Now, I'm not exaggerating when I say this is one of our most loved products, especially among our members in Wife Teacher Mommy Club. They have access to everything. And when I ask about favorite resources, what I tend to hear is the sub plans and the reading passages. And the reading passages are just incredible. They're a collaboration I've done with my sister, who is actually a professional writer. She She's written for newspapers, multiple big ones. She's working on her first book. She's written all these passages for us. She is just a stellar writer in every sense of the word. They're very professionally written. They've been professionally leveled. um, And we can't publish actual levels or say exactly what we do because of trademark and copyright, unfortunately. But I can promise you, or if you want to ask me privately, I can tell you what we do. They're professionally leveled. So you can rest assured that they are leveled appropriately. And when you purchase your grade level, so let's say, for example, you're purchasing it for fourth grade. We have them for kindergarten through sixth. With fourth grade, you'll get an upper, a middle, and a higher level passage. They'll have a heart. So the heart is the low level. There's a diamond for right on grade level and then a star for above grade level. So they're just little tiny icons in the corner that are pretty um, discreet. So we don't want students to feel bad or anything. It just makes it easy for you to see at a glance, which is the what level they're on. And then we have differentiated them. So even if you grab multiple grade levels, like if you teach a very wide range of students, like if you even need more than those three levels and you purchase a few grade levels or if you're in the club and you grab a few, we've differentiated it among the whole span. So if you have students at different levels, like even varying grade levels, they're reading on the same topic. Now, of course, it changes a whole lot from kindergarten to sixth grade. At that point, they are a completely different passage, but it's at least on the same topic. And if you're in a closer range, like third through sixth grade or kindergarten through second grade or whatever, you should be able to have similar conversations about the passages. So that is what I love about it. I can work with my children. As I mentioned, they're in first and third grade. Both of them are reading a bit above grade level. So they're on like the high passage for their grade level. And we can do those and then we can talk about them together. And it's just really nice that we can do that because even though they're at different levels, we could read a similar thing. We can talk about it within each grade level. The questions are even the same. Just the passage is different. So it It's really handy for differentiating. And we have two different versions. So we have our original reading comprehension passages. These are actually reading comprehension and fluency because these ones include fluency as well. There are 36 passages. The idea is you have one for every week. There's different fluency tracking options. These are passages that are not themed in any way. So you can use them, start using them, or use any of them at any time of the year. So those are the original ones. They have incredible reviews. Teachers love them. And then we have a new one. We have a growing bundle that's almost complete at the time I'm recording this. And those are our monthly themed passages. And in those, we have two narrative, two expository text in there, and they are monthly themed. So for example, I'm going to share what our November passages are. So for November, it includes a comedic Thanksgiving dinner tale, a descriptive essay about autumn sand sculpting, a nonfiction report about the Hopewell culture in honor of Native American Heritage Month, and a historical fiction origin story about the Wright Brothers for Aviation History Month. So it's a really good variety you get in each one. You get four passages for each month. These ones have the same differentiation that is known and loved in the original passages. The only difference is the monthly themes. And then these ones don't have fluency. They're just based on the comprehension and the differentiation. They work great together because you can have the original non-monthly themed ones for, you can have one of those each week and then do the fluency. And then you can use one of the monthly ones each week just for some additional reading and comprehension. So I love these passages. They work very well together. You can check them out in the show notes. I will link to those. Also, I will link to the free version. So we have free samples of both the original and the monthly subplants. I'm going to link to those in the show notes so you can grab them and try them out yourselves. And in the freebies, you'll get the entire leveling. You'll get to see exactly what I'm talking about, the kindergarten through sixth grade and how 
differentiated they are. I can't wait for you to check it out. Now, I want to share what a few of our users have said about this. I don't want you to just take my word for it. So Emily A says, I have students on a lot of reading levels, so buying this was a no-brainer. I can print out the correct level for my groups and not worry if I can't find great passages. Okay, and then Ann L said, I really like the tracking sheet for the students and passages. Also, the differentiation makes it better for me when I work with students one-on-one. They can all read the same passage, but in different levels to stay consistent with the whole class. Thank you for this. Bed Teacher 2 left this review on the kindergarten version, and this teacher also left reviews on some other versions too, but I wanted to point this out because the kinder has a little, another version of differentiation to it. So they said, I like that there are two different ways for students to show their understanding. Some students need the multiple choice and our others are able to write sentences. I like that they, the text can be the same. So on the kindergarten ones, we do have even different versions of multiple choice versus writing it out. And then in the others, we have more differentiation among the levels. So you can see that more when you download the freebies, because remember, I don't want you to take their word for it. We have those free samples that I'll link to in the show notes as well, so you can try them out yourselves. And we have samples of both. And I will also link to the book clubs and literature circles resource mentioned at the beginning of the episode. Um, Teachers have said this resource gives, and I quote, meaning and purpose to their students' reading. And that is also what they said is easy to implement from, for all scale levels. So both of these resources, the passages and the literature circles really work well hand in hand. So you can have differentiation with the full class or differentiation in smaller groups. So if you're a club member, be sure to access both of those. And they're also available as an individual purchase on our website or TPT. So to recap everything we talked about today, there were three simple ways to differentiate reading instruction. So the first is books by level and doing literature circles. Number two was Newzella, which was that really cool website that lets you assign different passages, whether it's news passages or social emotional learning or science. They have all sorts of topics. It's digital and you can assign those passages. And then our differentiated reading passages. And I shared experience from users. They've worked really well. We have those freebies for you. And also, I forgot to mention before that we do have both printable and digital versions of those. And the freebies include both printable and digital. So I highly recommend grabbing those freebies that are there for you, if nothing else. And if you love this episode and need even more support in the area of differentiating your reading instruction, um, be sure to check out episode seven, which is Activate and Differentiate, where I interviewed my sister, Tori LaRue, who I have worked on these reading passages with over the last few years. It really has been a passion project for us that has been going on for years. We love these so much. And then episode number 20, I talked about the eight step to test to make sure that you have high quality reading material. We talked about eight things that you want to keep in mind when you're picking those reading materials. So this can be good for when you're putting together those literature circles or whatever to make sure that you are picking the best content you possibly can. And then I also have a related blog post, which is four tips you need for using differentiated reading passages. So I will link to all of these different resources for you in the show notes and stay tuned for next week's episode. Trust me, you do not want to miss it. Until then, have an awesome day. If you're enjoying this podcast, be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And if you're ready to take the next step with me, then you are going to love Wife Teacher Mommy Club. Our top selling resources for pre-K through sixth grades have been used and loved by tens of thousands of teachers. And the club gives you one-click access to all of them to meet the needs of every child you teach while saving tons of time. Plus, you'll have our certified life coach in your back pocket with several monthly workshops and an Ask a Coach portal you can use 24-7. The combo of resources and coaching is our secret sauce to your best teacher life. Think of my team and I as your personal team, doing the lesson planning for you and on the sidelines coaching you and cheering you on as you focus on what you do best, impacting the children you teach. Plus, if you're loving this podcast, You'll also have access to our private podcast, Just for Members, where I continue the conversation with all of our guests with members-only bonus episodes. And don't forget the club VIP access to Educate and Rejuvenate, our summer conference, and our private Facebook community full of like-minded educators supporting each other. You do so much for everyone else, so it's time to invest in yourself. Your teacher friends' jaws will drop when they see just how quickly you finish your planning not to mention the glow of the happier, more fulfilled you. Head on over to wifeteachermommyclub.com to learn more.